Hello everyone, this is Dr. Vishal Trivedi from Department of Biosciences and Bioengineering, IIT Guwahati. And what we were discussing, we were discussing about the uh, different properties of the enzyme in the course Enzyme Science and Technology. And so far what we have discussed in the previous module, we have discussed about how you can be able to design the different types of inhibitors. So we have discussed about the traditional approaches, we have discussed about the ligand based approach, receptor based approach and at the end we have also discussed about the computer based targeted uh, inhibitor design. And uh, if you recall in the previous module, we have also designed, we have also discussed about the different types, uh, the, the different types of tools and as well as we have also discussed in detail about how you can be able to use the docking uh, softwares to design the inhibitors. And in the previous lecture, we have also discussed about how you can be able to study the enzyme inhibitions. So enzyme inhibition can be of two types, it can be of reversible type or the irreversible type. In the irreversible type, the, the inhibitor is of two categories. One, the irreversible inhibitors which are actually going to be block the active groups onto the active site. So they will be actually the uh, enzyme, in, 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 you know, enzyme active site modifiers and that's how they will actually going to modify the enzyme in, in such a way that the enzyme is no longer be active. The other category is the societal inhibitions or the mechanism based irreversible inhibitors where you are actually going to have the inhibitor when the enzyme is actually going to process the inhibitor then it is actually going to modify the inhibitor to a more active uh, species or some altered species and because that altered species will have very high affinity for the active site it will actually going to block the active site permanently and as a result it is actually going to cause the societal uh, inhibitions or it will actually enzyme itself is processing the inhibitor and it is converting it into an inactive enzyme. So in today's lecture uh, we are going to discuss about the other category which is the irreversible inhibitors and within the reversible inhibitor we have the three different types of inhibitors we have the competitive inhibitors we have non-competitive inhibitor and we also have the uncompetitive inhibitors so let's start the today's lecture so in the inhibit in the, in the reversible inhibitors we have the three different types of inhibitors we have the competitive inhibitors, we have the non-competitive inhibitors and we have the uncompetitive inhibitors. So let's start discussing first the competitive inhibitors. The competitive inhibitor, the competitive inhibitors compete with the substrate for the binding to the active site but once the bound the substrate cannot be transformed by the enzyme into the product. So what the competitive inhibitor is doing, for example, this is the enzyme okay so enzyme is making a sub interaction with the substrate right and that's how the enzyme is getting converted into the enzyme substrate complex and then this enzyme substrate complex is getting converted into the enzyme plus product right so if the enzyme is active it is actually going to do that but when you add the inhibitor for example you add the inhibitor right so when you add the inhibitor inhibitor will also have the same affinity for the active site as like the substrate right so and the inhibitor is actually going to compete and as a result the inhibitor is actually going to form the enzyme inhibitor complex and because the enzyme inhibitor complex is no longer be processed because the enzyme inhibitor cannot be processed whereas the substrate can be processed to form the product this reaction will no going to active right so this is not going to happen that the inhibitor is also going to be get converted into some product right so this is what exactly going to happen so you suppose you have an enzyme right and suppose this is the active site okay so if this is the active site it can actually take up the substrate on one side and it can actually take up the inhibitor on other side okay so if it is taking the inhibitor right it is forming the enzyme inhibitor complex. So this is the inhibitor what is going to bind, right? And this is going to be the enzyme inhibitor complex. So this is the enzyme, okay? 
and when it is interacting with the substrate, it, the substrate is also going to do the same, right? It is also going to be binding this, right? So it's also going. This is the enzyme substrate complex, okay? And uh, that's how it is actually going to uh, work. So enzyme is actually going to so the inhibitor is actually competing with the substrate for the same active site and that's why this particular type of inhibition is called as the uh, competitive inhibitions. Let's take an example to uh, explain you what is the competitive inhibitor. So the competitive inhibition of the succinic uh, dehydrogenase. Succinic dehydrogenase is an enzyme of the Krebs cycle, right? And what its job is that it is actually going to convert the succinic acid into the fumarate, right? So this is the this is the enzyme, okay? And it has the some of the groups and all that. So this is the three-dimensional structure of the enzyme, succinic dehydrogenase, right? And when it is con when it is interacting with the substrate, the uh, succinate, the succinate has the well-defined structure. So because of that. This, uh, this region, right, you see this region, this region is actually taking up the uh, acid groups and this group, this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, uh, these groups are also taking the acid group, okay. And then the succinic acid is getting converted into the fumarate, which is actually the product, right, of this reaction and then the product is going to be released. Now, the product in this case is also mimicking the same structure as the succinate. So in this case, what will happen is that if you add the fumarate, for example, then the fumarate is also going to block this active site and that's how the fumarate can be a competitive inhibitor. Taking this structure into the consideration, the people have developed a inhibitor which is called as the malonate. So malonate is exactly the same structure. You see the same structure, except that you don't have one uh, CH2, okay? So it only has one CH2, here you have two CH2. That is the only difference. So what happened is that these groups, this site and this site, these sites are crucial. And this site is where the inhibitor is going to compete. So what will happen is this acid group will go and sit here, right? And this acid group will go and sit here. This is exactly the same as for the succinate. So as a result, what will happen is that it is actually going to form the malonate enzyme complex. And once the malonate enzyme complex is formed, because the succinate can be get converted into the fumarate, but the malonate will not get in the product into the product. And as a result, the enzyme is actually going to be get fractionated into the inhibitor complex or the substrate complex. So wherever it is actually going to form the inhibitor complex, that uh, type of enzyme will no longer be active to form the product. So as a result, the ultimately all the enzyme is actually going to be get converted into the enzyme inhibitor complex and this enzyme inhibitor complex is going to be inactive. And that's how the enzyme is actually going to be inactive. Remember that this, all these interactions are mediated by the reversible forces such as the Van der Waal forces, electrostatic interactions, salt bridges and all that and that's why this, this kind of inhibition is called as a reversible inhibitions. So reversible inhibition of the enzyme by the competitive inhibitors. So competitive inhibitors compete with the substrate for the binding to the active site. But once they bound, the substrate cannot be transformed into the product by the enzymes. Inhibition by the competitive inhibitor can be reversed by simply increasing the concentration of the substrate. And competitive inhibitor resembles the normal substrate in the 3D structures. And uh, competitive inhibitors are making a complex with the enzyme and that's how they are forming the enzyme inhibitor complex. So as you as you remember that when we have discussed about the enzyme, right? So if you have an enzyme which has the active site, this enzyme is actually going to be fractionated into two different types of uh, complexes. One, it is actually going to make a complex with the substrate, right? The other complex, what it is actually going to form is the uh, inhibitor, right? So it's also going, can make the complex with the inhibitor, right? Now these are actually going to be you know reversibly uh, controlled so this is a 
uh, you know, the, they are in equilibrium. So this is the enzyme. It is forming a complex with substrate and it is forming a ES complex or EI complex. And all of these are actually the concentration driven. And that's why it says that inhibition by the competitive inhibitor can be reversed by simply increasing the concentration of the substrate. So for example, when you add the substrate, right, it is forming the ES complex. When you add the inhibitor, it is forming the EI complex. Now, depending upon how, what will be the concentration of the substrate, the amount of enzyme, for example, if you have 100 molecules of enzyme, you can actually have the 50 molecules here and 50 molecules here. For example, because you have added the 50 molecules of inhibitor and 50 molecules of substrate. Now, imagine a situation that I will add the 80 molecules of inhibitor. Uh, substrate okay so if i add the inhibitor the 80 molecule which means i have added another 30 molecules right so now what will happen for these 30 molecules the additional 30 molecules the substrate concentration is will go up right so as a result some of the enzyme which actually going to be free will actually go into this direction so this means if this will go by increase there will be a decrease in this particular complex and that's how it is actually going to be 20 okay so there will be only 20 enzyme molecules which will be present in the enzyme inhibition co inhibitor complex whereas the 30 mo molecules because it can go in the both directions when there will be a enzyme which is going to be formed there will be a free enzyme free substrate which is present and that's how it is going to be drive in this direction so if you increase the substrate concentrations the equilibrium will go into this direction and as a result you will have more and more enzyme substrate complex imagine that if i make it 100 then the another 30 will actually going to be reduced. So this, the concentration of enzyme inhibitor complex is going to be zero. This means all the enzyme is now present as the enzyme substrate complex. And that's how at this particular stage, there will be no inhibition, right? And this is what exactly it is written here, that if you increase the substrate concentration, the substrate is actually going to compete with the inhibitor. And as a result, it will be keep removing the inhibitor from the enzyme complexes. And as soon as the enzyme is going to be free, the substrate will go and bite because it is all driven by the concentration gradient or concentrations. So, competitive inhibitor is solely being drive by the concentrations. So if the concentration of the inhibitor will go down, the inhibitor will again the enzyme will again go back to the free enzyme and that's how the enzyme is actually going to be active and it will actually going to catalyze the reactions. So this is what exactly it is saying that if you have the enzyme, you can actually have the substrate, it's actually going to form the ES complex and that ES complex is actually going to form the enzyme plus product, right? If you add the inhibitor, right, then it is actually going to form the enzyme inhibitor complex, right? And uh, the interaction of the equilibrium constant for this is actually called as Ki, whereas in this case, it is called as the Km. So this means you have an enzyme which is actually going to be under the equilibrium of the substrate or it is actually the under equilibrium of the inhibitor right so if you add the inhibitor it is actually going to form the enzyme inhibitor complex and if you add the substrate it is actually going to form the enzyme substrate complex which means the uh, for a competitive inhibitor the enzyme is actually going to be fractionated into the two complexes enzyme substrate complex or enzyme inhibitor complex and this means if you have the total enzyme the total enzyme would be the free enzyme, the enzyme substrate complex and the enzyme inhibitor complex. Okay, So this you have to keep in consideration when you, we are actually going to discuss about the kinetics. This means the, and remember that the equilibrium constant for the enzyme inhibition interaction is called as Ki. So the Ki is going to be called as the concentration of the enzyme concentration of the inhibitor divided by the concentration of the enzyme inhibitor complex okay now 
the velocity of the uh, enzyme interaction is v right so you remember that if we when we were discussing about the maclean momentum constant right so velocity of this is actually, so this one is called as k1 and this is called as k2 right so uh, velocity is actually going to be called as the k2 and it is actually going to be breakdown of es right this is the direction right and uh, when when you are going to have the maximum velocity when you are actually going to have all the complexes as the uh, when you are uh, all enzyme is present as the enzyme substrate complex this means the v max is actually the k2 multiplied by the uh, et right this is the maximum what is possible right this means if i divide the v by the total enzyme right it is actually going to give me the this right so k2 es right this is what this is the equation number one this is the equation number two and so this is equal from the equation number one you can take this and the et remember this right this is the equation right so you can take, put this value here so you can put that concentration of e plus concentration of es and the concentration of ei okay so these are the uh, this is the et right so if i put the et from here right i can take this right so i can take this v by uh, k2 et right so this is what i can put here right and i can be able to do this so if i take this i can uh, put instead of this i can put the uh, michaelis momentum constant so you can i put the substrate divided by the km multiplied by the enzyme e right and i can do the this whole right so i can put the enzyme concentration plus substrate divided by km bracket right and uh, e plus inhibitor divided by ki okay and multiplied by e okay so this i have taken from here okay this i have taken from here right and if you solve this what you are going to get is you are going to get this v is equal divided by v max divide multi equal to s divided by km and 1 plus so this i have taken the this as the uh, you know outside right so 1 plus s by km plus i by ki okay and if you simplify this if you simplify this what you're going to get is you are going to get this what you are going to get you're going to get s divide by km bracket 1 plus i by ki plus s okay and this is what is very very important equation or very very important equation to uh, actually be able to understand the uh, competitive reactions okay now if i show you the reactions so this this whole thing uh, i can convert this so this whole thing i can if i assume this as the alpha right if i i uh, i by ki 1 plus i by ki if i convert if i can consider this as alpha then it is actually going to be called as s divided by alpha km plus s so it can be like this okay and uh, this is very important so v by v max is equal to s by alpha km plus s so and alpha is equal to 1 plus i by ki okay 
so let's discuss about how the enzyme kinetics is going to function okay so if i plot the substrate concentration okay versus the velocity so okay so in this case uh, first is uh, we can actually be able to show you the curve how it actually going to be so it's going to be like this when you have no inhibitor okay so this is the no inhibitor and you remember that if you take this and put it like this this is going to be the v max and this is going to be the v max by 2 okay and if i go over like this this is the km right remember the last time when we were talking about the maclis momentum curve right so this is the concentration of the v max uh, km now when you add the inhibitor okay when you add the inhibitor the inhibitor is actually going to take up some of the enzyme right so and that's how the it will actually going to reduce the effective concentration of the enzyme so in that case it is actually going to take the longer time to reach the vmax so that is going to be happen like this okay this means it is actually going to take the longer time to reach the vmax and as a result the, the velocity the the ramping of the velocity is less right so this is actually in the presence of the inhibitor this is in the absence of inhibitor so when you have the inhibitor it is actually going to take the longer time because as you are going to have one concentration of the inhibitor it is actually reducing the concentration of the enzyme and as a result it is actually lowering down the it is the, uh, asking the enzyme to, to go for more time so okay now it, it will still be able to reach to the vmax and as a result the vmax will remain the same vmax by 2 will remain the same but when you calculate the km the km is actually going to be different so this is actually going to be the the revised km or i will say the km when you have the inhibitor so what you can do uh, what you can see is this is the michaelis momentum curve right this is the michaelis momentum curve okay if i show you the same thing in the uh, line viewer work plot okay so line viewer work plot is also going to give you the better idea about what is exactly happening actually so this is the metallic momentum curve so 1 by v divided by 1 by s right so first is you have the no inhibition right so what will happen is that you have the no inhibition so this is the curve what you are going to get when you have no inhibitor so this is the v max and this is going to be the km now when you have the inhibitor okay so i'll use the same color right so when you have the inhibitor it is actually going to be because it is taking longer period of time so it is actually going to be like this this means it is going to be this and Vmax will remain same. So this is going to be in the presence of inhibitor. So what exactly is happening in this? Exactly it's happening is that when you have the V uh, competitive inhibition, the Vmax remains unchanged, but the KM is going to be altered. And what will happen to the KM? KM will be on a higher side, which means the enzyme is actually reducing uh, enzyme is actually uh, requiring the more amount of substrate to show you the same amount of Vmax and this is exactly what is going to happen because the enzyme is now fractionating into this right this means effectively the enzyme substrate concentration is getting reduced because you are some of the enzyme is getting channelized here right so you require more substrate so that it enzyme is actually be able to show you the vmax and then so in a competitive inhibition the vmax is going to be remain unchanged the km is actually going to altered and this is what exactly happened right when you have the multiple inhibitors so uh, when you have the multiple inhibitor and you are going to show uh, like the line will work plot what will happen is that you are going to have the 1 by s versus 1 by v so you are going to have the 
uh, for example, you are going to have T, this is going to be uh, no inhibitor, right? And uh, as you will increase the inhibitor, right? So if you increase the inhibitor, it will go like this. Will go like this. So here you are going to have the uh, so for example alpha is equal to one in this case. So there will be no inhibitor. If you alpha is equal to two, this means you have increased the inhibitor. So this if you increase the inhibitor, if you are increasing the inhibitor concentration, this means alpha is equal to four, like that. Then you are keep reducing the KM, and this is going to be the minus one by alpha km okay so if the alpha is 1 this is going to be the 1 by km if alpha is 2 then this is this and this and that and since this is on the minus scale this is not a problem okay so the slope of this curve is actually going to give you the value of alpha km divided by v max okay so this is the v max this is the 1 by v max okay and alpha is going to be 1 plus i by ki okay remember that so this is actually going to be very very useful so competitive inhibitors are easy to uh, design because you know the size of the active site you know the size of the inhibitor so you are actually going to have the many tools to develop the competitive inhibitors and there are so many of these competitive inhibitors like 6 mercaptopurine 5 fluorouracil azacerin cytosine all that okay and uh, they are actually been having the very very extensive uh, applications in the field of cancer virus and all that and then these are the, some additional inhibitors what people have also used uh, the most popular are the statins and methotrexate and uh, dicropyrrole and all these are actually being used in different types of diseases. So this is all about the competitive inhibitions. Let's more discuss about, so this is the, all about the competitive inhibitions and now we'll discuss about the non-competitive inhibitions. So in a non-competitive inhibition, uh, so what are the different properties of the non-competitive inhibitor? So non-competitive inhibition is reversible but not reversed by the substrate. So that is a characteristic uh, contrasting character. Okay. Remember that the, in the uh, competitive inhibitions, you can be able to reverse the competitive inhibitions by increasing the substrate concentrations. Uh, inhibitor binds at a site other than the substrate binding site. That is another point. It binds the reversibly to both free enzyme and as well as the enzyme substrate complex to form the to form the inactive enzyme inhibitor complex or enzyme substrate inhibitor complex. This means the enzyme is going to interact with the uh, inhibitor and it's going to form the enzyme inhibitor complex or enzyme substrate complex is going to interact with the inhibitor and it's going to form the enzyme inhibitor complex. The inhibitors, how it actually going to function as an inhibitor? So inhibitor actually altered the conformation of the enzyme molecule so that the reversible inact inactive activation occurs. They are naturally occurring metabolite metabo intermediates. So non-competitive inhibitions, as the name suggests, the enzyme, you are actually going to have the enzyme which is interacting with the substrate and it is going to form the uh, complex, right? So forward reaction K1, this is K minus 1 and the enzyme substrate complex is going to form and then it is actually going to form the K2 and it's going to form the product and the free enzyme, okay. Now, in the non-competitive inhibition, because it is not going to compete, it is actually going to bind a discrete site or allosteric site. So, it's actually because it's binding to the discrete site, it actually can bind to the free enzyme and uh, actually unbind the enzyme substrate complex. So, that's why it actually can bind the enzyme inhibitor, okay, and can form the enzyme inhibitor complex or it can actually be able to bind here and it actually can form the uh, this 
enzyme substrate inhibitor complex okay so this is called as ki and this is called as ki prime okay and uh, once uh, it actually going to form the enzyme inhibitor complex or enzyme substrate inhibitor complex it is actually going to lead to the no reaction so remember that whenever the in in inhibitor binds whether it binds to the uh, uh, allosteric site or whether it binds to the active site it will never be uh, be processed by the enzyme to form the product so the ki again we will write the reaction for the ki so ki is actually going to be that enzyme inhibitor and enzyme inhibitor complex remember that here again the enzyme is now fractionating into the substrate so it's forming the enzyme substrate complex uh, enzyme is uh, fractionating with the inhibitor so it is forming the enzyme inhibitor complex and enzyme is also binding to the this so it's also forming the uh, substrate inhibitor so it's also forming this so it's actually getting fractionated into now three individual uh, molecular species uh, so and the ki prime which is for this right is going to be the es divide sorry i divided by concentration of esi okay so we are again going to write v by et is going to be k2 es okay divided by remember this is the what is going to happen so this all are going to be right so et et in this case would be e es esi and ei okay so et is going to be e plus es from here right then it is going to be ei and then it is going to be esi okay so if you solve this and if you it is going to be give you this v by v max is equal to substrate when will be the v max when will the v is going to be v max when the e is going to be et right so that is going to be km bracket 1 plus sorry this is right 1 plus i by ki plus substrate bracket 1 plus i by ki prime okay so this is the substrate okay and now if you want you can actually be able to convert this into another equation and that would be like substrate divided by alpha km plus alpha prime concentration of substrate okay so alpha alpha km again the same way the uh, so don't we get confused right alpha is equal to 1 plus i by ki and alpha prime is 1 plus i by ki prime okay so since we don't want to make this so complicated we have just uh, taken the alpha as the uh, substitute of this so if this is alpha this is alpha prime Okay, so alpha km plus alpha prime sulfur substrate concentrations, and uh, so in this uh, v max by v by v max is equal to uh, substrate divided by alpha km plus alpha prime s. Okay, and this is very important equation for uh, non-competitive inhibitions. Now we'll see uh, what will be the uh, uh, you know how the uh, the curve look like right so curve if you have the curve you have a substrate concentration right and uh, we'll have the no 
subset. So first you are going to have no inhibitor. So it's going to be like this. So it's going to be no inhibitor. Okay. Now when you have the non-competitive inhibitor, okay. So when you have the non-competitive inhibitor, uh, it's going to be uh, it's because you know now, now there's a difference, right? So uh, sorry. Uh, so, I uh, will write all the parameters, right? So, this is going to be Vmax, this is going to be, so this is velocity versus this, and this is going to be Vmax by 2. So, this is Vmax by 2, and I will go like this, then this is going to be the Km. Now, we will show you how the non-competitive inhibitor will look like, okay? So, when you have a non-competitive inhibitor, okay, you are actually trapping the enzyme through an alternate website, uh, alternate structure, okay? Remember that the inhibitor is actually interacting with the enzyme and inhibitor is also interacting with the enzyme substrate complex. And as a mechanism, it is actually changing or altering the 3D structure of the enzyme, okay? 3D structure of the enzyme. Right? Or I will say it is actually uh, changing the 3D conformation of the active site. And so as a result, it is actually going to change its affinity for the substrate or it is actually going to change its interaction with the substrate. So as a result, it is actually going to affect this and so it will not be able to attain the Vmax. Okay? So, in this case, the Vmax is going to be like this, okay. So, this is going to be the Vmax when you have the inhibitor. So, this is going to be in the case of inhibitor. And you will see this is the, okay. So, it is actually going to alter many things. So, so it is going to alter Vmax, right. So, it is going to alter the Vmax. Now, we will we'll show you the line verber plot, okay. So, in the line verber plot, okay, what you are going to do is you are going to plot 1 by S versus 1 by V, okay. And uh, the slope will be like this, right. So, first you are going to have the no inhibition, right. So, you are going to have no inhibition. So, this is going to be uh, no inhibition. So, there will be no inhibitor, right. Now, you are going to have the, uh, you, as you will change the, uh, you know, as you will actually going to add the inhibitors, it is actually going to affect the Vmax. So, it is going to move like this, okay. So, this is actually going to be uh, inhibitor 1, inhibitor 2, so the, all the concentrations, okay. So, all you see here is, and this is actually the 1 by V max, okay. And this is going to be 1 by V max when you have inhibitor, okay. And this is actually the uh, minus alpha by uh, alpha prime by alpha km, Okay. This means if alpha and alpha primes are not present, then this is going to be minus 1 by Km. And uh, you see as I am increasing the inhibitor concentrations and it is actually changing the Vmax. So, it is also lowering down the Vmax. Okay. So, in this case, the non-competitive inhibitions, you are actually going to affect Vmax. So, the slope of this curve is actually going to give you the information about the alpha km divided by v max okay and remember that alpha is 1 plus uh, inhibitor by ki okay whereas alpha prime is 1 plus inhibitor divided by Ki prime. Okay, so these are the two things what you have to always remember. Okay, okay. So from the slope, you can be able to calculate the Km and Vmax, and this is the K Vmax. This is the Km. What you're going to get. 
So the clinical significance of the non-competitive inhibitions. So non-competitive inhibitions are more potent and you know more uh, uh, problematic than the uh, the competitive inhibitors. So there are so many inhibitors what you can use. You can have the inhibitors for the heavy metal toxicity. So, uh, for example, the heavy metals. Heavy metals, for example, the metal which contains the uh, uh, the silver, ar arginine, and lead, they are binding with the sulfhydryl groups of the enzyme, and that's how they are actually forming the non-competitive inhibitors. And that's why you remember that the all these heavy metals are bad for the human health because they are actually going to inactivate so many enzymes, and that's how they are actually going to force the toxicity. Then we have the pep uh, peptatin. Peptatin is a protease inhibitor for the uh, pepsin. Then we have the soybean trypsin inhibitor, which also have the inhibitor for the trypsin. And then we also have the ethanol or the narcotic drugs. So, and that also has the inhibitor for the acid phosphatase. So what happened in the, uh, the non-competitive inhibition is that it is actually, uh, so in, 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 in an enzyme, you have the two different sites. You have the active site, you have the allosteric site. So substrate actually can fit into this active site, right? And uh, so what happened is that inhibitor will go and sit here, okay? So inhibitor will go and sit in the allosteric site. It does not go and bind in the active site, okay? So that is the major difference, okay, between, from the competitive inhibitions. And once it binds, it actually induces the conformational changes. And because it changes, induces the conformational changes, it's actually affecting the binding of the substrate to the active sites. Either it will reduce the affinity or either, or it may actually abolishes the uh, substrate binding completely. So either of these cases, the inhibitor is actually going to be very, very potent compared to the competitive inhibitor. So let's see a comparative statement, how the comparison between the competitive and the non-competitive inhibitions. So in a competitive inhibitions, the, uh, the substrate or the inhibitor both are competitive for the active site. So this is the active site, which has the, all the requisite three-dimensional structures. You have all the interactions, everything available for both inhibitor and another substrate. So whoever will be more in consultation, it will actually go and bind. Whereas in the case of non-competitive inhibitor, inhibitor will go and bind to a distant site. It is always being called as allosteric site. And once it binds, it actually brings the alterations into the active site. And that's how the substrate binding is going to be compromised or the affinity is going to be reduced. So this is what the tabular form I have given you a comparison between the competitive and the non-competitive inhibitions. So uh, the competitive inhibition is active in the active site, whereas the non-competitive inhibition is may or may not be active at the binding site. Uh, then the structure of the inhibitor, the most of the competitive inhibitors are the substrate analogs, but the non-competitive inhibitors are unrelated molecules because they are supposed to bind to the allosteric site. Then inhibitions, uh, both in both the cases, it is uh, reversible inhibitions. Then uh, if you add the excess of substrate, uh, the inhibition can be relieved in the case of competitive inhibitor, but it is having no effect onto the non-competitive inhibitor. And that's why the non-competitive inhibitors are more potent compared to the competitive inhibitions. Uh, KM, uh, the KM is actually going to be increased in the presence of inhibitors, whereas it is going to be unchanged in the presence of inhibitor. Uh, the VMAX, VMAX is actually going to remain unaltered in the case of uh, non-competitive inhibition, whereas it is actually going to be decreased in the case of non-competitive inhibitor. What is the significance? Uh, significance is that it is actually going to have, both of the actually going to have the therapeutic applications, uh, whereas the non-competitive inhibitors are mostly being used in a uh, toxicological applications. So now let's move on to the third category and the third category is the uncompetitive inhibitions. So uncompetitive inhibitions, uh, the, the inhibitor is actually going to bind to the ES complex, okay. So this means it is actually going to affect the Vmax and KM is actually going to be decreased. For examples are alkaline phosphatase. Uh, inhibition by the phenylalanine. So in this case, what happened is that the enzyme 
is actually interacting with the substrate forming the enzyme substrate complex okay and then this enzyme substrate complex is converting into the enzyme plus product now inhibitor does not have the any affinity for the enzyme but when the substrate binds and form the enzyme substrate complex then it actually interacts with the enzyme substrate complex and forms the enzyme substrate inhibitor complex and this is actually not allowing the any kind of process so it's going to give you the no product okay so this is exactly what are going to happen so enzyme you have an enzyme it has an active site okay so it's going to interact with the substrate and it's going to form the enzyme substrate right? it's going to form the enzyme substrate now at this stage if you add the inhibitor molecule inhibitor molecule will also going to have the additional so this is going to be substrate and when you add the inhibitor it is inhibitor is actually going to have the additional active site so on this active site you have the substrate on this active site you are going to have the inhibitor so basically when the substrate binds it actually uh, forms uh, inhibitor binding site so it actually creates the inhibitor binding site and that's how the inhibitor is actually going to bind uh, so uh, this is what exactly going to happen so the enzyme which is interacting with the substrate uh, is giving the enzyme substrate complex so this is the k1 this is the k minus one and then this is actually going to form the so k2 is going to form the enzyme plus product and from here the inhibitor is actually going to form or the inhibitor is going to interact to give you the uh, enzyme substrate inhibitor complex right and this will not going to process okay so this is called as the ki prime because remember that we will not going to use the we will use the same convention so ki prime also we were using when we were talking about the uh, non competitive inhibitors so the ki is uh, es I divided by E S I. Okay. Uh, remember that the E T in this case would be E E S and E S I. Okay. So it's going to be E E S and E S I. Okay. So these are the th three uh, way in which the E T is going to divide. Okay. Now v is going to be k2 es that is and v max this is the old thing actually we are writing the same thing right k2 et right when the name of substrate concentration is going to be total right so v by et is going to be k2 es and instead of kt e you are going to write e es sorry e plus es plus esi right now instead of writing the esi you can write the ki esi and all that and because of that the it is going to be and instead of e2 et you can write the uh, K2ET. Then it is going to be S by KM bracket may E, right, and divided by. Uh, E plus S by K M multiplied by E plus S I so S I divided by K M K I multiplied by 
e okay and if you simplify this okay if you simplify this you're going to get v by v max equal to because this is the v max right so v max v by v max is equal to s by km divided by 1 plus s by km plus s i divided by k m k i okay and this is what you can use you can convert this into the so if you take the uh, the average of this you can actually be able to convert one in plus so see s is also here s is also here so you can take the s out and you can be able to convert this so ultimately v by v max is going to be s divided by alpha k m plus s so if you simplify all this okay s by k m s by k m all this so you can easily take the s by k m out from here okay and then it will actually can be used and cancelled out everything so then it will actually going to give you this is the final equation what you are going to get okay and this is the equation what you can use to in to understand all the parameters now we'll see the line weber plot how it is actually going to work right so you're going to have one by s versus one by v okay and this is what exactly going to happen okay so you are going to have the slopes like this like this and like this okay and this is the no inhibitor and this is the from here to here so this is the inhibitor concentration one this is the inhibitor concentration no so increasing inhibitor okay and as you increase the inhibitor what you are going to do is you are so this is going to be minus alpha by km okay so you'll see that you are actually changing the uh, km and you are also changing the 1 by v max okay so this is the 1 by v max okay so this is the v max when you have the inhibitor concentration 2 this is why it is so because in this case you are altering the when the inhibitor binds it actually induces the conformation and that's all so in this case there will be a alteration in the v max so it's going to be altered uh, km is also going to be altered okay and that is the characteristic of the uncompetitive inhibitors the slope of this curve is actually going to be km by v max okay and the alpha prime in this case would be 1 plus i by ki ki prime okay and this is what you have to use so uh, this is all about the um, mechanism of the inhibition of the enzyme uh, we have discussed about the reversible enzyme so we have discussed about the competitive inhibitions we have discussed about the kinetics of the competitive inhibitions and how it is actually inhibiting the enzyme and what are uh, what we have learned that if you increase the substrate concentration you can be able to relieve the inhibition by the competitive inhibitors. In addition to that, we have also discussed about the non-competitive inhibitors. So non-competitive inhibitors bind to a distant site or the allosteric site. And when they bind to the allosteric site, they are actually inducing the conformational changes. And as a result, it is actually altering the binding of the substrate. Uh, and then we also discuss about the uncompetitive inhibitor. So uncompetitive inhibitor does not have any kind of binding site onto the enzyme structure. But when the substrate binds, it actually creates 
the binding site for the inhibitor and that's how it's actually going to bind the enzyme substrate complex rather than the free enzyme and that's how uh, in either of these cases it is actually going to affect the KOM or the uh, Vmax. So, with this I would like to conclude my lecture here in our subsequent lecture we are going to discuss some more aspects of the enzyme uh, in the course enzyme science and technology. Thank you. Mm -hmm.